Why would I leave work if it's helping me achieve a major life goal? If I were going at it like by myself, I wouldn't have access to any of this. This show is dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. Welcome to the Marriage, Kids, and Money podcast, everybody. This is Andy Hill, and today we're talking about taking a sabbatical from corporate America. In 2021, an unprecedented 45 million Americans voluntarily left their jobs. In March of 2022, alone this year, 4.53 million workers quit their jobs, according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics figures. This was a record-setting month. The reasons behind this exodus are obviously very individual, but they range from seeking better pay and benefits elsewhere, or the desire for more flexibility in the career, or just simply burnout. So to combat the burnout, sabbaticals may be corporate America's latest weapon against the great resignation, according to Fortune magazine. So to help us understand the benefits of a sabbatical, I've invited Rich Jones on the podcast today. Recently, Rich took a sabbatical from his corporate career at Google and found some incredibly rewarding results. Outside of his corporate career, Rich is the host of the Mental Wealth Show, a certified wellness coach, and the founder of Find More Balance. And when Rich isn't helping professionals improve their lives through these platforms, he enjoys competing as a master's track and field athlete across the country. Welcome to the show, Rich. Thanks for having me, Andy. Happy to be here. And I also love the way you set this up. Well, for sure, man. Well, it's a good conversation. I think it's very relevant for what's going on in the country right now. And with your personal experience, I think we can help a lot of people. So I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yeah, that's the goal. Let's make it happen. Absolutely. Okay, well, let's talk about what were the factors that sort of led up to you wanting to take a sabbatical? Now, me wanting to take a leave, it actually happened pretty quickly. I remember in August, and I'd been struggling a bit up to this point, anxiety, panic attacks here and there. But in August, it, start, it started to get really bad, where difficult work tasks, things like sending emails, adding stuff to the calendar became really difficult. And there was a work meeting where just on video, I had to turn my camera off because I was having a panic attack just sitting here uh, watching this video conference go on and nobody had called on me or, or anything like that. And so I started thinking like, man, what is what is going on? I'm in the most fulfilled and aligned role that I've ever been in. It's the most values driven role that I've ever been in but I'm still feeling this way. And for the longest time, I thought it was about leaving corporate America. I got to get out of this day job. I'm meant to be an entrepreneur. That's what my peers from even going back to 2008 are out there doing. I'm seeing all of this stuff on social. I got to take a leave and figure this out. How do I get the heck out of here? So at the beginning of September, I decided to take a mental health leave from work. And I'd seen my manager take a leave as well. Uh, which empowered me to take a leave, you know, that kind of leadership by doing. Yeah. And it really set the uh, path, the charts, the map for uh, me to be where I am today. Yeah. So talk about that decision point, because that's a big thing that I think people are weighing with. Do I just leave this all together or I do a sabbatical? How did you do those sort of pros and cons in your head and and make this decision? Yeah. So it it had come up in masterminds, accountability groups. When you're going to leave, you keep talking about leaving. And so I had started saving money from the business. I started putting that aside in a a fund that I called Get Out. That fund has since been renamed since I went back. I had been thinking about it for a while. So I was figuring out how would it work as far as money that I would need to generate on my own. And, you know, if I were to, let's say, engineer my departure where I end up getting a severance by voluntarily leaving, but still getting, you know, like three, four months, however many months from the company, what would that look like? And so uh, I, I was thinking a lot about the financial side of it, but then I was also just thinking about the, okay, like, am I really ready to just be out there on my own? Uh, Am am I ready to to not have this income coming in? And with all this stuff that I'm feeling right now, am I ready to be going at it solo where I may not have access to healthcare providers at the rates and prices that I do right now? So I had to think about a a lot of that stuff, you know, talking to my partner, what would that look like uh, if, if there's a stretch when... Maybe I'm not making as much money. I've never had a stretch like that where where I haven't had consistent income. And then um, also just the general uncertainty of what's happening in the world. And then like I can't imagine, and I've probably said this to you in the past about when you jumped into entrepreneurship and and, and you went uh, 100% into it, where now we look at like where the market is today and it's like, yo, like I can't imagine 
not having the security that I do right now. And so those were all really big factors that that went into it. But I mean, going on the leave, like it's it, it happened fast because just of how I, I was feeling where I was like, I got to get out of here. Uh, what's really important is that people know that I it was a sh- it's considered a short term disability leave, the, the leave that I took. A lot of people don't know that mental health leaves can be a short term disability leave. Sometimes it's personal leave. Uh, mental health leave is kind of a catch all term. But for me, it was a short term disability leave. That period of time off that. 13 weeks, that time off was completely paid. And that was partially paid. Yeah, it was, and I think a critical distinction for folks like, wow, you got, wait, I thought, you know, short-term disability only pays a certain percentage. And it's like, well, it does, but a company can choose to pay the remaining portion. So if the short-term disability policy paid 65%, 670%, Google was making up the other 30% to make me whole. So I basically had 13 weeks off fully paid to really focus on myself and, and, and determine what was right. I think that's great. You said so many great things in there that I just, I wanted to, I wanted to jump in. Like, like we always do, we have a, we have a mastermind together. We're, we're, we're buddies. That's a little bit of a back, background for you guys. But I think that, that the over glorification of leaving your job and becoming a business owner is a little bit too, it's a little bit too hot out there. Uh, I, and, and it bothers me. It, it, it straight up just bothers me. I think it's fine to be a business owner and owning your own time and all that. And I, I, I do love it, but I think that there is too much out there that's not talking about these benefits, the benefits of consistent pay, the benefits of healthcare, the benefits that a, a solid, good company like Google can provide for employees. I've personally n- not really wanted to be the sort of quit your job, get rid of your nine to five, a business ownership is everything kind of guy out there. Um, and I, because I, because I have, I, I personally enjoyed a lot of the benefits of corporate America. So I'm glad that you pointed that out. Let's let's talk about the process. You said your supervisor was also on this on this track of uh, of a leave or just uh, very, um, I guess, emotionally in tune with where you were. Talk to us about those conversations when you said, I think this is something I want to do. It's interesting. I had been talking to my manager about it for probably even a, a couple of months leading up to the time that I went. So I wasn't talking about Lee specifically, but I was talking about how I was feeling. And so we had a very open conversation. I had talked about uh, the anxiety a little bit. There were also instances where I would be in a meeting and I would just like, and and this still happens. uh, I would lose track of where I was, not like physically in the room, but just like what I was saying, or I would just like lose my train of thought. And it wasn't until I went out on that leave that I found out that part of that was from having complex PTSD for most of my life. But uh, I felt comfortable having that conversation because we were already having an open dialogue. And that's why I think it's, it's important to have a good relationship with your manager. Of course, there's also a responsibility of the manager to also kind of meet you halfway. And, and for them, like once they went out and also just my team in general, the, the type of work that I do, uh, it's, it's pretty much one-on-one coaching for internal folks and we're meeting them at critical junctures in their career. So it, it can be pretty highly stressful work. So also within my organization or team in general, they really do preach taking care of yourself, probably more than any other team that I've worked in. So so part of why I was comfortable is, yes, I saw my manager do it and we were having an open dialogue leading uh, up to it. But then also I saw other people on my team uh, make space for themselves. And I'm like, if, if they can make space for themselves, I can make space for myself, you know? Yeah, I think that I think that's great. So you not only had a, a welcoming manager supervisor for the conversation, but you worked in an apartment that was all all about that and being emotionally in tune to what's yeah. going on with work. But that's not common, unfortunately. Hmm? Oh, no, yeah. no, it's not. That, <laughs> yeah, it, that, that's it's the first role that I and we need that. It's the first role that I've been in where they're like, no, 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 like, really, you got to prioritize yourself. But what is starting to happen in corporate America is there's a lot more talk about wellness and well-being. And so now there are all of these programs. And so they're they're catching up now. A lot of other companies are are, are starting to catch up in terms of what they're offering. But that that finding a good manager and sometimes it really just comes down to doing what serves you and doing what's best for you. And I know sometimes that's easier said than done when you're worried about losing your job. But would you rather, you know, lose a few days or lose the confidence or would you rather lose your sanity? Absolutely, man. And I think hopefully this conversation or other conversations like it are a call to corporate America in general with all the stats we shared at the top of the show about people leaving because this is an important thing. We are spending more time with our colleagues and our managers than we are with the people we love uh, in an environment that it needs to be be somewhere you want to go each day where you're feeling like you are 
a part of something bigger and and really helping. Let's let's talk about the sabbatical itself. So what were the first couple of weeks like when you when you made this transition? You had your leave. How did things change for you? Talk to us about that. People do not tell you what it's like to be alone with your thoughts, to be truly alone with your thoughts. I think a lot of times corporate America, we use our jobs as an escape from home, from reality, from the voices in our head, self-included, stay, stayed busy for years, just constantly doing things, doing things so you don't have to confront those various things that are actually probably the reasons that you may be struggling at work or you may be struggling in some areas of your life. And, and that was the case for me where uh, those first couple of weeks out, it was just like the the things that I was hearing and, and people talk about hearing voices like, oh, this person might be crazy. And it's like, no, 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 no. Everyone has negative self-talk. This was like negative self-talk on 10 just just <laughs> like just all of these things memories coming up stuff that i hadn't thought about before and i'm like man this is really challenging and it was probably two weeks into the leave that i went to a psychiatrist actually and again like these are benefits things that like if i was just going it alone it would have been really complicated and, and, and really expensive but i ended up going to a psychiatrist and i learned that's when i, I learned like yeah you have complex PTSD. And then I'm talking to my therapist and she's like, yeah, I didn't want to write that on any paperwork, but I've known that. And I'm, I'm like, well, this explains so much. So, and then I think right after that was, was FinCon. And so uh, I'm in the depths of, of, uh, of processing this. I'm coming to terms with this, you know, condition that I've had my whole life that I've always thought was 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 somebody else, like something I saw on TV, and now I'm realizing that like I'm the person that like I've I've seen on TV. So like that realization, while challenging and it was difficult to sit with, that if 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 I don't get that realization, I don't think that I make some of the pivots that I've made. I don't think that I take some of the additional steps, you know, going to um, an additional type of therapy that's helped me work through some of this past trauma. I don't get to the root of my issues if I don't take this leave from work. And so th those first few weeks were, were really painful. And, and FinCon was a good respite. I mean, there were some parts that, you know, weren't the best, but F FinCon was a, a good respite from some of the things that were going on. But yeah, it's, it's not instantly easy. You're just kicking your feet up. Like it, it took, it takes a few weeks to even disconnect from work. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel that so much. So talk to us about, you know, there's somebody listening saying, you know what, how does somebody seek out that therapist kind of help that they need? Like, where did you start where you said, hey, I think I might need to want to talk to somebody? Like, how, how do you even start that? Yeah. So I've had a therapist since 2017. And uh, to find her, I went on Psychology Today. And you can filter for therapists by demographics, interests, specialties. And so that's where I started. People hear about EAP and things like that, but a lot of a lot of companies will also offer kind of like ancillary uh, health benefits. Where, for example, uh, I can get access to a therapist for a certain number of sessions per year. It, it's important to to look into some of those benefits. It's like, oh, there's EAP. Like, oh yeah, there's healthcare. But what about like access to mental health professionals, therapists, especially now and and probably for, forever going forward, since since it is a, a super hot topic. Uh, talking to like people are scared to go talk to someone in HR. It's like oh HR trouble bad. And it's like no 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 no. They're they're humans just like you. They want to be happy. They all really do want you to be happy. They don't want you to be miserable. It's okay to go ask questions and 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 run scenarios. Uh, so for for me, like it was looking at the uh, different types of uh, of leave or that were available to me at work, what one to take the leave. But I even thought about like what I was going to do when I came back. But then as far as as the therapist, like I had that ongoing uh, relationship, but I had to add someone new to my team. And, 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 and also because I was taking a mental health leave from work, there, there was some things that needed to be like doctor documented as well. But um, I, I had to add additional like therapeutic help to my team because I wasn't getting the results that I wanted. But uh, also I wasn't doing de the depth of work needed because I didn't know that I had something that, that even required that in the first place. That makes sense. And, and some of these benefits might even exist at work too. So talking to your HR rep might not be a bad idea for people. Talk to us about, um, I guess you, you said the first couple of weeks were really, really rough. How, how did you 
I guess, stay motivated? Did you set goals for yourself? I mean, what ended up being your purpose during that sabbatical that you found? I feel like setting goals for myself is part of what got me there. Mm. And I say that because it's like we're always setting goals, setting goals. If we're if we're if you're a content creator, like there's there's, there's metrics, there's metrics, there's numbers. You're all, you're always setting goals. I didn't set anything. I just allowed myself to feel all of the painful stuff. Yeah, I know. Like I said, it, it took weeks to uh, disconnect from work. I was surprised how long it, it like it took to fully disconnect. And, and and yeah, I was worried about judgment. I'd only been on the team for six months at that point. Uh, I don't feel like I really proved myself. And there are reasons that I did felt like I hadn't done my best work. And that was because I was dealing with all of this stuff. So um, I really just had to just like sit and, and that's what my therapist, my long term therapist was telling me too. like, I really just had to sit just like feel all of that stuff. And it wasn't until deeper in the leave that I started figuring out what I actually wanted. Yeah. Well, I think that's a really good point, man. I think that's a, especially for a goal oriented dude like myself, where it's like, okay, set goal, problem fix. And it's like, I've found that although setting goals for yourself and taking action really do help myself in the long run. Um, I, I also find that it's not a, it's not a solution for everything. Um, especially when we're talking about things like this, um, sometimes doing yeah, nothing and, and that's what can be a lot. So <laughs> men in particular, yeah, men in super goal driven, and this is not to say that any other group is not, mm-hmm. but men like it's, it's just goal driven, achieve accomplishment, yeah. flex on them, style on them, responsibility, lead family, want to appear positive. That's us. That's very true, man. That's very true. Well, talk talk to us about the, I guess, this ending point of the sabbatical. How did you, I don't know, I, I guess I'm feeling for myself, like how how would you feel confident and strong enough and ready to want to go back? And, and or were, did you get- I wasn't. Did, yeah. <laughs> talk to us about that. I wasn't. I wasn't. Well, and so here's a, here's a tip. You may have to ask me the question again because yeah. of my ADHD. I got that going on too. But here's a tip. So, someone told me um, before I went out on leave, my leave initially was supposed to be six weeks. Yeah. And it became 13. When I initially even was going to propose it, it was going to be like three weeks. But somebody told me, take more time than you think you need. And so I thought I needed, you know, three weeks. And then I stretched it to six weeks. And then it turned out that I actually needed 12 weeks. So I want to offer that same advice to folks as well, that if, if you are looking at taking a leave and you find an option at work that works for you to ask for more time than you think that you'll need. As far as like coming to the realization of going like back to work, one, I didn't have a choice. Like the time ran out and my doctor was like, yeah, you got to go back. Just before I went back, I went on site for a doctor's appointment. Then uh, I'm on site in a Google building and then I go upstairs to check out the gym. And I'm like, this gym has everything I need for my track and field training, which is a major life goal. And then on the way out of the building, I stop in the cafeteria and I grab like a nice healthy breakfast. And I hadn't done this for a few months because I'd been out on leave, right? So, you know, the whole absence makes the heart grow fonder thing. Mm -hmm. And so I come back and I'm like, I've been spending all of this money on food these past few months. Uh, I hate cooking and I have access to breakfast, lunch, dinner. And I know everyone doesn't have this, you know, but I'm like, why would I leave work if it's helping me achieve a major life goal? And I was thinking about it. If I were going at it like by myself, I wouldn't have access to any of this. And oh, by the way, uh, I can get access to a massage therapist through work. Uh, I have access to a chiropractor. And I'm like, why would I walk away from this? You know, Uh, I think one thing that anyone could apply. Some people are going to be like, well, I don't have that rich. Like what, well, what can I do? One big thing was the importance of setting boundaries. So when I went back to work, uh, and this is a a decision I made before I go back, I decided that I did not want to feel the way that I felt when I went out. I was like, I never want to feel that way again. So I was very clear about the boundaries that I set. I mean, of course I couldn't be like, I'm only going to work on this and you know, it was it, it was more so like, but I did have a conversation about the number of clients that I take for the type of work that I do because of the emotional toll and some of the conversations were triggering uh, and things like that. So I did say like, hey, I can't I can't be overloaded with clients like some other folks in the team, but I am really strong at X, Y, Z and I see X, Y, Z happening. I would love to work on these type of things. And so now uh, it's really a testament to it. Like, so now I'm working on some of the most exciting projects that I've worked on probably ever. Uh, I, I feel seen at work. 
Uh, I feel like I have space to do the things that are uh, important to me. And uh, I don't feel any like shame around taking days off or, or traveling for track. It's really been about how do I create the life that I want and how do I make work for me? That's been my, my ongoing mantra of like, how do you make work work for you? So like, I'm, I'm just continuing to tap into things. I'm, I'm finding what can I leverage from the company? Even my wellness coach certification, I'm going to get part of that paid for by work. So like there's there's a lot of ways to 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 make work work for you and then that was a really big revelation r- right around the time I went back. I think that's fantastic. I, I mean I you could probably speak from personal experience of course, but then I guess you've probably spoken to other people about this conversation. Do you think companies in general are maybe a little bit more open to that type of feedback about what you can and can't do or need in your work situation than they were maybe a couple of years ago? Hell yeah. Now more than ever. <laughs> Because think about it, like there are companies that are have gone a hundred percent remote. So like just that alone, that where for two and a half years or however long it's been, people proved that they didn't need to be in the office to do their job. Well, not everybody, of course, but like a lot of people proved that they didn't need to be in the office to do their job. And you think about the job market, how competitive it is right now. I'm not sure how things have changed in the past. It's kind of crazy what's been going on with the economy over the past like couple of months or so. Who could have predicted what, what's happening across the world, gas prices and all of that stuff? I think right now companies are more accommodating than they've ever been, partially because of the great resignation. I mean, it's, it's all supply and demand, right? Like that goes across like everything. And so uh, Google's losing talent, LinkedIn's losing talent, other big tech companies are losing talent, small companies are losing talent. And it's not necessarily that, Uh, companies are losing talent to other companies. Yeah, that's happening. But some people are just exiting the workforce altogether to do their own thing. They're taking time, they're taking extended time off. And so I I really do believe that like companies are thinking, that's why I say things like wellness and well-being are becoming a lot more prevalent. And uh, just the the post that I'm getting from LinkedIn, from just consuming the content on the site, it's just, I'm I'm starting, I just see so much more about wellness, well-being, uh, things that uh, companies are doing to accommodate folks in, in different everyday situations. Uh, I'd say there's, it feels like there's a lot more humanization that's happening. I would agree. Uh, let, let's talk to the person who's been listening and really appreciates you opening up and sharing your story like you have and saying, you know what? I think I, I think I could get down with a sabbatical. I think that could really help me with my situation that I'm in right now. Talk to them about how they can approach their employer about this. Yeah. And for me, it's, it's interesting when it comes to the sabbatical stuff, a lot of times it really doesn't have to start like with your direct manager. There's often a form or something that you need to submit that gets automatically triggered. But for me, it was part of it is that you need to have, uh, this is why I recommend doing what you can to have a good relationship with your manager leading up to it. So it doesn't feel like it's such a, a, a tense conversation. One thing you have to note is that you don't need to get into all of the details about what exactly is going on and why you need to take the leave. Like you can keep all of that stuff to yourself. I think the the punchline is, you know, hey, um, had some stuff going on. Uh, I need to, I've done some reflection. Uh, I'm really going to need to take some time off. Uh, I think it'll be the benefit for me for the uh, long term. So I wanted to talk to you about what the potential options are. I think a lot of times we feel guilty and we start like trying to explain and explain and explain. Even like I've had the guilt of like wanting to use my own vacation time before where I'm like, oh, well, you know, I got it. I want to do this thing this weekend. And they're like, Rich, you, you, it's your freaking vacation time. So I encourage people like don't go in like filled with, if you can, like don't go in like filled with shame about doing what's best for you. Like you have to remember that this is in service of you. You're not trying to cheat the company out of money. You're uh, not trying to be lazy. You're trying to take care of yourself, which is going to then allow you to take care of everything else. Hmm. So when you go in that conversation, it's really about what you, what you want, not how they're going to respond, not what they're going to think. It's about what you need for yourself. I think if you put it in the context of like what you need for yourself, that you think it's going to uh, really allow you to get the space you need to perform at the level, whatever that is, I think it's that, see how they respond. 
And then if you're comfortable sharing a little bit more, cool. But uh, otherwise, like I, I recommend trying to get to like the solution part of it and like, you know, who do I go to? Who do I need to talk to versus getting into a big dialogue about, oh, like you have to do this now? Because that's really, again, the, it's at the point that you're thinking about a sabbatical, it really is about prioritizing self first. You know, if you are in a spot where, you know, it's a super busy season and maybe you want to clean things up and, uh, and have a smooth transition. So you say, you know what, I'm not going to ask for this now, but I'm going to ask for this maybe in a few months. That could be a factor as well. And then also tenure. Mental health leave. It, so it turned out to feel like a sabbatical toward the end, but it didn't feel that way a lot of the way through it, which I think is a bit different. I do know some companies do have sabbatical policies specifically where if you've been there for a certain number of years, you can get a certain number of days off either paid or unpaid. Uh, I would say if there's if there's not a paid portion of it, you're probably going to be looking at a personal leave, which can be unpaid. So that's something else to consider as well. Like before you even ask for the leave, you need to be confident and certain about how you're going to have your stuff together for that time. And if there's going to be any type of money gap, how you're going to have that covered. Giving yourself the time and the space to do that. So maybe vacation days or whatever it might take for you to prepare for that space. Because I mean, what we're talking about in this, in this conversation is essentially giving yourself space to make good decisions for yourself. So if you're feeling yes. crunched with work, I mean, maybe utilizing some of the other benefits to prepare for a sabbatical might not be a bad idea. Yeah. And, and, and that's a great way. I mean, even before the sabbatical, because you might do long weekend then be like, okay, that didn't work. And then you do a week off and you're like, you know what? It took me five out of six days to get back. And on the seventh day, I'm traveling back to go back to work on the eighth. Then after that, you, you start to real, maybe you start leveraging some of the other resources. And then you're like, you know what? I see where this is going. Or even if it's just like, I really, when else am I going to have the opportunity to scratch this itch, take this time off, do this thing? Life is only going to get more busy. So there's always going to be something. It, it really does require like the insight into what you want. And you do need to understand your values and, and be closely aligned with them enough that you can still make the hard decision, which is to ask for the time off. For, for many of us, it's the hard decision. I think in my case, while it felt like I was making the choice, I was forced to make that choice because I hadn't taken a leave sooner and I was actually burnt out and had all of this other stuff going on. I think this is a really good message. And Rich, I feel like I've been a part of the the transition over the last year because you and I have been close friends. Uh, so I appreciate well, you sharing it with me as well as here on the show. <laughs> well, it's no, and I, I appreciate you saying that because you remember there was a point where I was in a bad spot. And last July, I had to go on a trip to Hawaii. So looking back, I was like spiraling. I, I didn't know it then. I thought I just needed to get away. But like, you've seen the whole year and you've seen like what's happened and like how I've evolved and everything as I've created more space for myself. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're getting to have this conversation because you know, it's not just talk like you've actually seen this happen. Absolutely. And and you are not only uh, doing it for yourself, you're helping a lot of other people out there too. So talk to us about where people can connect with you and find more balance, my friend. Yeah. So on Instagram, you can find me at Rich Runs Track because that's what I be doing. So at Rich Runs Track and then uh, findmorebalance.com. That's the website. And it's really about holistic wellness for high performers. So uh, whether you're thinking about navigating your career, navigating your finances, navigating your mental health, We've got you covered. So findmorebalance.com. And yeah, those are those are pretty much the places that I'm hanging out. I'm also on Twitter at I am Rich Jones. But um, other than that, yeah, those are the places to, to catch me out. But I'm, I'm trying to get into posting a lot more on the on the gram these days. I keep saying that and eventually it'll start happening. Hey, man, it's all good. I I, I have been uh, connected with Rich for a while, both as a uh, a content fan as and now as now as a good friend. So Rich, thank you so much for your, your time today. Everybody check out what Rich's got going on. And Rich, thank you so much for pouring into us and helping us think about a really important topic and uh, making space for for that uh, for that conversation. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. And again, do what serves you. Mm -hmm.